Uh, welcome everyone to basically the announcement of Tesla Energy. 2170 cell has been Tesla the most important fundamental product developed so far. We know very little about the cell and there's a lot of speculation around regarding the chemistry, capacity and performance. After reading so many comments from uh, the previous video I posted it, I can confidently say that Tesla is using their own developed chemical structure that improves the performance of their cells greatly and cannot be compared to other regular production 18650s, 2700s or 2170 cells. Yes, I agree, Tesla did not invent the lithium-ion batteries, but in partnership with Panasonic, they improved and further developed the present format and made it possible the production of the first designed from the ground up electric car to be the most accelerating, the most safest sedan on the roads with unparalleled performance to cover over 300 miles on a single charge. And on the Gigafactory, I mean, is the chemistry going to be the same battery chemistry that you're currently using, or is that part of the, the discussions that are going on with Panasonic? There are improvements to the chemistry, um, as well as improvements to the geometry of the cell. Um, so we would expect to see an energy density improvement, um, and of course a, a significant cost improvement. Do you want to that right? Um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, the, the cathode and anode materials themselves are, are a next generation, so, um, you know, we're, um, I mean, we're seeing improvements in the maybe 10 to 15 percent range on, on the chemistry itself. Yeah, in terms of energy density. Energy density. And, uh, and then, you know, we're, we're also customizing the, the cell shape and size, you know, to further improve the, the cost efficiency of the cell and uh, packaging efficiency. Right. Um, we've done a lot of modeling of trying to figure out what's the optimal cell size, um, and it's it's really not much. It's not a lot different from where we are right now, but but we we're sort of in the um, you know roughly 10% more diameter, uh, maybe 10% more um, height. Uh, but then you know since so the cubic function sort of effectively ends up being just from a geometry standpoint, probably a third more energy per cell, uh, if you, or maybe 30 percent ish. Um, and, and then, then, the, then the, uh, the the actual energy density per unit mass increases. So, yeah, yeah. Fun, fundamentally, the chemistry of, of what's inside is what really defines the, the cost position, though. You know, it's often debated, you know, what's shape and size, but uh, at this point, we, you know, we're developing uh, basically what we feel is the optimum shape and size for the best cost efficiency for an automotive cell. Yeah. But the chemical formula will be the same, it's just shaped differently, or...? or no, 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 it'll differ both, both. Yeah, yeah. The issue with existing batteries is that they suck, okay? <laughs> They're really horrible. <laughs> They look like that. Um, they're, they're, they're expensive, they, they're, they're, they're unreliable, they're, they're sort of stinky, ugly, bad in every way, um, very expensive. Uh, you have to get some sort of, uh, you know, you, you need to combine multiple systems. There's not one integrated uh, place you can go and buy a battery that just works, uh, which is what people really want to buy. So we have to, we have to come up with a solution that, that that's, the, that's the missing piece, that's the thing that's needed to, to have a proper transition to a sustainable energy world. This is the size of the batteries needed to transition all of the United States to being solar with batteries.